Coming up on this episode of The Village Idiom. (laughs) Completely full Monty came in and just joined us. So we're sitting across from each other. They're sitting across from each other. Just buck full Monty, get in with us. And in unison, we're just like, nope. (laughs) (laughs) Village Idiom. Hello, and welcome to The Village Idiom. We are a podcast that every single week chooses a popular saying to take a shallow but hopefully revealing and wide opening, comedic, once in a while even interesting dive into its meaning, its usage, its origins, but we're also going to use it to hang our otherwise directionless conversation on. My name is Jurassic Mark. I'm Skinny. We are a podcast. We are a podcast. <laughs> Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. <laughs> the dials are spinning right now. Oh my goodness. Uh, well, tune into what? Well, today uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. We're going for the full Monty. <laughs> there it is. The, the full, full Monty. Monty. That is sounds like an exciting podcast. That is. The, you, this is the week. Do not check the video out. This is the saying. week to be on YouTube. <laughs> If you're just listening to this podcast via audio, whatever podcast listener you use, this is the week you might want to take a little dip on over to <laughs> a dip, a little skinny dip, <laughs> the Villagidium YouTube channel, or three minutes gone. Three minutes gone. Why do we call it three minutes gone? Ah, uh, part part of the one of the things that uh, uh, we did. I guess it's kind uh, of our uh, umbrella now. Yeah, um, in 2017, we shot a series of videos that were three minutes long every day. All full Monty. Yeah, it was mostly uh, uh, pulled off of YouTube, <laughs> but 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 we threw it out there, you know. Full Monty wasn't long. filmed from the waist up. <laughs> yeah, even then, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. It's like uh, it's not good. It's it, I look like a melted white chocolate Toblerone. Are you talking about your body again? <laughs> what? You're obsessed with your body, but who isn't? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Full Monty. <laughs> well, it's, it's more of a half Monty. The uh, quarter, quarter Monty. One of my favorite full Monty. One eighth Monty. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not good. That's just wearing like a turtleneck. It's just adorable. It's the one eighth Monty. I'm doing a one eighth Monty <laughs> right now. So you know that is a great turtleneck <laughs> reference. One He's doing the one eighth Monty. <laughs> that means he has a turtleneck. That'd on. be a great. Speak. We were last week. We were talking about. Um, uh, me, people with meat on the bones having p- great personalities or stand up comedy skills, whatever. There's a bit right there that you can find if you're if you're a heavier comic and you're up like t- referencing the Full Monty movie or whatever, and you're like, yeah, not with this body. I'm more one eighth Monty. <laughs> one eighth, just my head showing. It's more of a one eighth Monty. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't even use it at summertime time when you're like you know just running around in like swim shorts that you're doing a half Monty. No, it sounds like a a, a, a diving move. <laughs> yeah. Hey, watch me, mom! I'm gonna do the half Monty <laughs> from the high dive. I'm 49. <laughs> but mom, look watch at me, me. mom! <laughs> Come so, on, if you were doing a half Monty off the high dive, your mom would for sure come see you. Uh, definitely, particularly if it was billed as that. My parents came when we I decided be, to jump out of an airplane. I will be doing a... They're supportive. They'll come to stuff. Guess what I found? I'm going through some stuff in my crawl space. And I found a signed... Uh, congratulations. I uh, just found mine. No. I the fa- certificate. I found mine literally last week as I was going through stuff. Yeah. I, I actually... You have you. How many years ago was that? 19 years ago? You have successfully completed an, an independent uh, jump from... Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, this is exciting. So I, I'm going to put it in like a picture frame and put it on my Funny, wall. Funny, I just found mine and I'm like, I've hung on to it for 19 years. I'm going to turf it. Did you? Yeah. Well, I kept mine. I'm going to put it I, in Because I was like, I haven't even looked at this. If only you had a place where you could years. randomly put oh, whatever you felt like. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Shoot. In the studio would have been per- I'm going to go look. If I turfed it, turfed it, or if it's sitting, I know where it would be. But well, I kept the pictures of us. I don't have a picture of it. Ah, well, I'm going to shred those then. <laughs> <laughs> so, so well, the most standout full Monty scenario in my mind was uh, heading up to Seymour Mountain with three friends. And if you're going full Monty, I want to see more. <laughs> you want to see less of what I saw. And so me and one of my buddies, it was we. he's got this four by four and it was snowing like crazy. Zero people at the top of the mountain, uh, just a couple staff. No vehicles, and you know we're donating around, just having a good old time in, in his uh, his four by four, just 
We stop in the parking lots up top. Going out for a rip. Going out for a rip there, bud. And <laughs> and so we get out. We're just admiring nature and taking it all in. It's like, it's so fun. It's so beautiful. It's awesome up here. And two friends stayed in, in the truck. There's like, oh, we'll get out later. And so we're there and we're just looking around. It's snowing. It's fantastic. And we're just like, you know, just en- enjoying the, the experience. Well, not 20 seconds later, one pops out of one door and one pops out of the other of the truck completely buck naked and they run in opposite directions circle around run back and start doing snow angels completely in the buff and it was like you're like laughing but you're disturbed you're like that is hilarious i shouldn't what you know this is yeah yeah it's so awkward which is what friends do right so this is uh the definition of full monty in this case is Full nudity, 100% nude. You which are is in the buff. Which, which is the, not the origins, but that's how most people think of Full Monty because full, of the 1997 movie that we that quote was from. The Full Monty. Is like 100% nakedness. <laughs> yeah. I remember being in a, a, uh, a gym, like a rec center in, I think it was on Prince Edward Island. <laughs> And uh, we were, we, this is when we were touring, right? And we had these days off and me and my brother-in-law was with me. We, everyone was going to, I think they were going to see Anne. Like, okay. and I'm like, I just don't. P-E-I. Yeah. P-E-I-O. <laughs> Didn't feel like it. And so we found this, uh, it was a rec center that was like the basement of a mall. So the entire footprint of the mall downstairs hmm. was basketball courts, racquetball courts, okay. workout, blah, blah, blah. So we went down there, we were playing racquetball and whatever. And then in the change room, not in there. I don't even think there was a pool. In the change room, there was a hot tub. So we're like, awesome. Let's in the change room? Yeah. Weird. Okay. Well, now I know why. Because we're sitting there after playing rounds of, of racquetball, me and my brother-in-law. And just the way you described it popped into my head. From this side, this door over here, and this door over here, two like 80-year-old men with meat on their bones. <laughs> Actually, it was meat falling off the bones. <laughs> Completely full Monty came in and just joined us. So we're sitting across from each other. They're sitting across from each other. Just buck full Monty, get in with us. And in unison, we're just like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> get out of the hot tub. It's like, I'd rather be cold. And uh, whatever's going uh, hot on. Hot tubs. I'm not not that, that we're talking That's about not, this Were you in a Turkish bath? No, the, the fact that it was in the change room gave the permission to just like, whatever, men's change room. There's the showers. There's the hot tub, and uh, it never, just never crossed our never mind. Never even heard of because we were in shorts. Right. Never crossed like, our minds you to get should. in. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. bizarre. Hot tubs were ruined for me by another friend's dad who had this beautiful little acreage with a fire pit. And, like we had barbecues and things there a couple of times, and every time there was a gathering, people would go, yeah, "This this needs a hot tub." And he's like, "Never, like never." Have you ever cleaned the filter of a hot tub? <laughs> you guys know what the filter in a hot tub is filled with? Dead skin and feces. And he goes, that's just a big swirling stew of dead skin and feces. Never. And I'm just like, oh, I remember I've heard you share this because I have a hot tub at my house. Oh, that's right. I'm like, hey, it. it would be like, uh, hey, man, do you want to like... Uh, but pop over for the afternoon and we'll make some chicken wings and grab a hot tub, whatever. And you're like, you're sitting in the hot tub. It's like, have I ever told you the story of basically <laughs> we're swimming I'll, in dead skin and feces? In the hot tub. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still down. Uh, uh, that's so funny. Well, I have, a, I have one more oh, th- this in this hot tub full Monty vein. Okay. So for like 20 years or whatever it was, a uh, dozen years, I was a, a youth leader at the church. And uh, we'd take go on adventures and all the rest of it. And this one time, it's like, okay, guys, let's do a like a little backpack trip, and we're gonna head up to these natural hot springs at the north end of Harrison. And I'm like, this sounds fun. And so we, we got in like the church bus, and we took the church bus through logging roads. I forgot as, we had a church bus as back far then. as as far as it would go on these logging roads before it was like this is this is a bad idea. Now the church bus is wedged into the <laughs> exactly logging road. Exactly rolls off. And uh, so then we're like, okay, we're going to hike the rest of the way. We get up there. And it's like, this is amazing. I'm like, I know. I told you guys. There's this little cabin there that the, one of the settlers had put up, and you could sleep in it for free. We're going to do a, an overnight. This is wow. great. So we show up in the night. We got like. Like settlers, settlers? Like pioneer? That kind of thing. That okay. kind of thing. 
and this settler person felled logs to make an Olympic sized like swimming pool of uh, out in the nature of a hot tub. And it's just tucked away. You got to hike for it. And yeah. Yeah. Even with four by four, you're going to be in trouble. You got to. Anyways. So next. So we have our sleep uh, that night and fun. OK, let's get up next morning and breakfast. And t- we get up. It's like, you guys jump into the hot tub. Like, this is why we're here. It's like, this is fun. Yeah, yeah. And so everyone's in. Of course, we're all modest and it's young people and everyone's, you know, modestly swimsuited and we're enjoying it. And a couple comes strolling up and and they full out bucked naked, full monty in front of this group of teenagers. teenagers. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is whatever is happening right now. This is going to be this is bad. And so I'm just like, all right, guys, just, just look away, whatever. And so they crawl into the in, into the tub, and so we're there, just like, okay, like whatever, don't just don't look, and that'll be fine. Well, up comes re 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 re, and up comes a motorbike with this uh, Japanese tourist, like with uh, all camera gear, and he communicates that he's just like he's on his motorbike adventure doing the back trails of British Columbia. Wow. Would it be, and ask the couple, is it okay if I take pictures of you? And so this couple is like stark naked. They're obviously voyeuristic enough that they're like. And and then Japanese uh, tourist guy on his echo adventure snapping pictures. I'm just like, I'm going to jail. I'm going to jail. (laughs) Whatever happens here, Uh, it ends with me going to jail. And so that was a couple full Monty hot tub. Wow. Yeah. This is awful. It's terrible. That's so so. Ping pong the the full Monty stories. When I was a teen in a church youth group, <laughs> the boys, uh, like senior high boys, we had a camping trip and we went to Poland Lake in Manning Park, which is whatever drive to Manning Park and then a three or four hour hike and freezing. In yeah, I mean it was summer, but it's glacier fed though. It's yeah. gla- it, it was ice cold. But when we got up there, funny enough, there was a little felled log lean to cabin uh with another story with that some other time but uh poland lake is there and it is ice cold but we, d- we did go swimming so first day there you've hiked for four hours the sun is out it's a hot day it doesn't matter like we've all jumped in right. ice cold water and refreshing is yeah, awesome yeah and so we a bunch of people jumped in but because it's all guys a bunch just stripped down, like took off their hiking gear and just jumped in. Like no digging through your backpack for your shorts. Okay. Uh, including some of the, the leaders. Oh no. Like, what? Yeah. It was just like, whatever it's all guys, woo, jumping in and swimming across. Never crossed my mind the inappropriateness of a leader well, and being th- naked. There are different cultures now, that, from, but depending on your cultural background, yeah, where they're not as maybe body. So it didn't phase body anybody. shamey as it didn't phase anybody. Yeah, yeah. Nothing inappropriate happened. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. you're in the water, hidden. But up comes a hiking family. Oh dear! While we're all in the water, I, Mister Modest, am in shorts and I'm yeah, in yeah. and out of the water. And uh, but some you're of the like, leaders are stuck in the water. You're like, Come on, guys! Ice cold. <laughs> And uh, they couldn't take the freeze anymore, and had to get out in front of the. It wasn't wasn't like children, but right. this, this Still, whatever group it is, of strangers, and uh, they're just like they were tormented. Tormented campfire. I can't believe it. Can't believe it. Like literally went and found those people. I just want to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Should have thought of that ahead. <laughs> anyway, anyway, wow, you wow. All right, you win. <laughs> you, you win on the who goes to jail. tonight. I'm going for the full Monty. <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> well, before we get uh, ourselves into too much more trouble, we should probably uh, discuss where this actually... You want to? Uh, <laughs> might as well. Where it actually comes I from. said some words, where'd they go? Where'd they go? No one can know. I turned around and looked behind. Those words came from another mind. Origin. Oh, Alrighty, so that that last one was also a clip from the same Full Monty movie, 1997. Here's the clip from IMDb. Six unemployed steel workers form a male striptease act. The women cheer them on to go for the Full Monty. Means total nudity. However, the Full Monty, until 1997, wasn't used to talk about no. nudity. It was, and still isn't always used to talk about nudity. It's just talking about 
going for the whole thing, the whole everything, the complete enchilada. package, the whole enchilada. So I'm going to turn my screen a little bit here because uh, there is no definitive origin, but I found a list of potential origins. And so we'll do our balderdash oh. thing because there is one or two that most people land on as okay. being, yeah, that's got to be it. That's got to be it. So uh, number one. It was invented by the British comedian Ben Elton as a substitute for the whole shebang. The whole shebang. Potential. We, well, that's how we use it. Yep. Next one. It's simply a variation of the full amount. The full amount. <laughs> wow. Okay. Next one. Ooh. It derives from bales of wool imported from Montevideo. This, that one sounds like a terrible, no one would vote for that one. Next one. It comes from horse racing where Monty. Uh, sorry, it comes from horse racing where Monty has long meant a sure thing. Okay. Next one. It refers. Hmm. Oh, you thinking? Well, there's that. There's that card back and forth. Three cards. Where, yeah, that's where, that's one of them too. Oh, which is the which is the three card Monty. That's this so one. So be, it denotes a large stack of cards on the table when the American card hmm. game Monty is played. In Monty, by the way, the cards have five suits, clubs, diamonds, hearts, spades, and birthday. Oh, that's a joke in brackets. <laughs> birthday suit. I'm like, what? <laughs> it took me that long to birthday suit. I was that's reading it like day. I'm reading a fact here. I'm like, oh, <laughs> somebody funny. added a little tongue in cheek, copy and paste here. That's funny. Uh, okay, so. So, uh, I, so I could see I could see that previous one. Okay. There's got to be more. Which one? Horse racing or cards? Well, I know the three card Monty. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So the, the the horse racing, the sure thing. So here's the next one. It refers to being fully duded out in formal clothes, rented from a British haberdashery called Montague Burton. That's that's becoming my favorite. And okay. I'll give you the, the last one. It's an eponym. Do you know what that means? Mm -mm. It's an eponym. <laughs> Is that it. like a pen you stick in a kid that gets a bee sting? If you eat a peanut. <laughs> you need an eponym. <laughs> Eponyms <laughs> melt in your bloodstream. My name is not in your not in your head. Eponym. My name is. Uh, it's an eponym that refers to the impressive appearance of British Field Marshal Bernard Law Montgomery, known as Monty, whenever he wore his full complement of medals. Hmm. So to go all out. Yeah. So that I actually like that one. Field Marshal Montgomery. Always wore his medals. He went full Monty, I guess. I I had heard something vaguely about uh, Field Marshal Montgomery enjoying a uh, his his complete breakfast, regardless of whether they were in wartime or not. That you needed to him and his troops needed to start their day with a per, with a good big breakfast. And the, he endorsed that, so it was the, the full Monty. The full Monty. That if you were with him and his platoon, you were going to get the full Monty. All right, well, I'm going to touch on that. But which of those on the list would you lean towards first? I'll tell you the one, to refresh your memory, the ones that you commented on was horse racing. The one that you said was your current favorite was uh, the Montague Burton and the British haberdashery owner who... I like that one. Going with that one? Yep, to, uh, I, I like getting suited up. Okay, well, the most often repeated derivation is from the tailoring business of Sir Montague Burton. Ah, you win. that's fun. He, uh, so a complete three-piece suit, which is a waistcoat for like a wedding or whatever, uh, everything would be the full Monty. And is plausible hearsay evidence from staff who worked in Burton's shops who confirmed that customers were familiar with the term and often asked for the full Monty by name. I want... A three-piece tuxedo, like as formal as can be. It makes sense. The full Monty in terms of from Monta Sir Montague Burton. It makes sense in terms of clothing, so that to not have any clothing could be the full Monty. And the fact that so Burton opened up his first mm. job in 1904, flourished business, chain of shops by 1906. So it wasn't just a one shop. It actually has some potential that the word got out as getting the full Monty from Montague Burton. Uh, and, uh, yeah, his name was well known. The business went on to become the world's largest wholesale bespoke tailoring service. Hmm. It was the Montague Burton shop. Interesting. Full Monty. So the other one, uh, which you also commented on that's second in believability. So Sir Montague Burton wins for the internet's vote on 
Okay. This is probably where it came from. Yep. But the second one was uh, explanation from Field Marshal Montgomery's, again in Montgomery. Oh, no, the other one was Montague, wasn't it? Montague Field, and Burton, yeah. Field Marshal Montgomery's alleged habit of wearing his full set of medals. Uh, or, same guy, his insistence on his troops eating a full English breakfast every day. There it is. So, same guy. Yeah. He was all out in his medal wearing. He was all out, like, everybody eats a full breakfast and was universally known as Monty. Or, he was known as Monty. But that's where it gets circumstantial a little bit because... There's actually more explanation linking Montague Burton than there is uh, Mar- Field Marshal Montgomery, but both really work. Family, it's the weekend. Mom's preparing the full Monty. And then she comes out and makes a full breakfast. In a three-piece suit. <laughs> what? Dealing three cards. <laughs> Amazing. So, yeah. yeah, you'd have to be up on your on your history... Otherwise, mom's offer is might not be something that uh, you want the, for the family. Mom's offer? Oh, if she comes out in full... See, I didn't even make the connection there. Like, if mom comes out with breakfast at Full Monty? Yes, yeah, this is a, the Full Monty. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I, you, this is one that I don't know that we're going to get back. Have we learned anything from the Full Monty? <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that was coming. <laughs> is that from The Simpsons? Yeah, that was like the guy in the bar. Barney. Sounds like the guy at the bar. I never thought about Barney has the word bar in his name. There was so I'm I think I've told you before, I'm binging through The Simpsons. I'm mm-hmm. in I don't know, season seventeen or something right now. Uh, and there's thirty or more. Wow. And uh Barney has a whole season of sobriety. I didn't know. And that. he's the town drunk, like from episode one, but then he comes back to being drunk. So I don't know if they were under some maybe some fire for portraying uh, an alcoholic it, as, as a positive a part of society. I don't, yeah. Huh. I know that uh, Andy Griffith back in the day, they had their town drunk. He was in jail all the time. I can't think of his name right now. I know exactly and, who you're talking about in, in, in my brain. Half cock eyed little hat yep, situation. That's yeah. exactly. Uh-huh. Little, little uh, barbershop quartet hat kind of deal. I was thinking more like bobbly fish stuff. Oh, right? maybe it was. Yeah. Anyway, he was always in prison. Uh, Barney Fife guarding them, right? When they did their reunion, uh, they cleaned them up. They're like, yeah, alcoholism isn't funny anymore. Well, it's not that. That's a tricky, uh, a, a tricky thing. And this kind of, uh, you know, this is going to take us into a, a two minute direction. Um, so because something is not funny, like, so we say alcohol is not funny, but doesn't mean that something within, um, uh, that situation that they wouldn't do something that is funny. So if they're like, yeah, Otis. So if, if you're, if you're, so if the person they're portraying is, and he's just like, he's making, you know, offhanded, funny little remarks with a, it's not that you're making that you're saying, Oh, alcoholism is funny. It's just like, no, his, what he did was kind of amusing. Yeah. I'm not, but I don't know. Like the, the thing is a tough place to be because in the end, nothing then becomes funny. Right. Because I can find a situation where it's like, oh, paper cuts are funny. But that, that's the guy problem bled, guy bled with, to death. You think with paper cuts are funny? people who have a more... I guess paper cuts aren't funny. <laughs> <laughs> a darker sense of humor is I can find funny in almost everything, so but only the, some funny would I share. So this is the, that's a philosophical thing on either everything has potential to be funny or it, it's not. Uh, but then it becomes subjective, saying, well, that's not funny. Well, says you. So I, it's all, hmm, yeah, it's all I in know, the this, ears of the receiver because. But then that person gets to choose how they heard it to lambaste you. But here's the thing, like. I've gotten trouble for saying stuff. Like, you make fun of me and I love it. And I've said before to people, like I've used your name. I don't know if I've ever said this to you. But I'm like, if I'm ever, you know, hopefully in a long time from now, if I'm ever dying of something in the hospital, I pray oh, come. that Skinny comes in beep, and just like beep, beep. makes fun of me. <laughs> yeah. Is that your ringtone? Like <laughs> That. Like, if you don't make fun of my illness, I'll be so disappointed. Yeah, because, but I don't know if it's just that, that our, that chemistry, but it's just on a that philosophical, it's like nothing is funny or everything is funny depending on. 
And so if it's just left to, well, I didn't find it subjectively funny. Well, of course, like there's going to things that we have preferences in. But by nature, is it funny or is it not funny that we should never look at it, discuss it? So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty conservative in my language and whatever, but I, I think I do have a darker sense of humor. Mm -hmm. uh, not all the time. Like I find funny in everything. But like my sons who are now grown men have girlfriends coming into our lives and they've had to like get you back get, they've had to no they've had to get used to oh oh you guys will joke about anything right literally anything yeah yeah and it doesn't mean that it in of itself is funny like so like you can say something about like oh you know someone was depressed you know it's like well, depression's not funny right but if the did something with within but that that we found funny depress on nails is funny <laughs> Exactly, <laughs> depending on your point of, of view. So uh, what's that, the comedian, uh, uh, Daniel Tosh. Yeah. Is, does, yeah, so there you go. He, you he have says, to have a taste for Daniel Tosh. He, well, he says it's like no one finds like pedophilia funny, but everyone laughs at a Michael Jackson joke. Funny. Right. And so it's like, it's not funny, but when it's, so it, depending on how it's constructed, right. you will find humor in it. Fair doesn't enough. mean it's funny. But the woke crowd right now is just... I mean, they they're no. just aiming at everything. Yeah, you, yeah. We should basically just never publish this podcast, <laughs> right? Well, inevitably, we've said all sorts of horrible things. Doesn't mean we like you mean it. It's just you're looking for something fun in the moment. Yeah, and sometimes it's just a play on words. It's a rhyming thing. That doesn't mean you're endorsing something. Right. It's like a oh, this is funny though. Right. You should be able and, and disposition and how you kind of glean things out of like your own. I, you know, if you, you see funny things because that's your disposition to see things in a, with a silver lining, then you just laugh. Personally, I, but I'm, if you don't, I'm you saddened don't. by the attack on comedy right now, mostly because in history, modern history, comedy has actually uh, provoked change sure. in a positive way. Right. Comedy, because comedy has been given license to say what a more politically correct person will not say, they're able to sh sh shine lights on things uh, th that can rub someone the wrong way, but you're like, okay, point made. All right. Yeah, I, I remember I've shared uh, the story with you, but uh, there was a, a situation where we're laughing along with somebody and, and said something that later discovered that they had taken a certain way to be like a little more offhanded and I got like raked over the coals for right you just never know for that it's like I thought we were we were all laughing like a minute ago and, and now it's it's what you said you meant in this way and this is how I choose for you to have meant it I I, and then the blowback consequences, it's like, that. what? That's not how it was intended? I will, I will confess to one that stands out my brain immediately for just like, And they're going to rip down my statue, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise it up again. <laughs> I was with a group of people. We were playing a card game. Um, and uh, the rules had been explained and explained. And new people, had, it was like, a, I don't know if we were at camp or something. Rules had been explained, and then someone else comes to join. The rules explained again. One person that had been there the whole time just was not getting the rules. And I made, I've never made this joke since, ever since, because I felt so badly. But I made this awful, awful gesture and a mocking voice of a deaf person and said, you know, fake sign language, like, how can, can I? Can you understand me? Yeah, can yeah. you understand me? And the table goes silent. This person I did this to oh, no, 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 has no, no. a son who's deaf. Oh, I could feel it coming. And yep. it went silent. And as soon as I did it, I remembered. And thank the Lord, because I got criticized from other people, at, like kind of How take, taken aside. Of garbage, yeah. You know, did you know that so-and-so has a deaf son? They're in the deaf community. And I'm like. Did you do the hand signals right, though? <laughs> no, probably not. If it, if I did, it was lucky. See, I would say something like that. So I went and talked to the person, and she's like, oh, "Oh my goodness, no! I completely appreciate that kind of humor. Don't worry. I thought you did it because you knew." <laughs> and I'm like, "I would sense it if you think I am." And I'm like, "So I was yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. but right. I felt it's terrible, and I have never done that particular joke, right? It's in that way right. again." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah, you can get in trouble. Wow, we're... Wow, that got... Full Monty, hey? Let's get off that soapbox <laughs> and uh, get back to this podcast.
Anywho, uh, I'll edit all that out. Well, uh, we are definitely out of time. Oh um, man, my Lanta, that last little bit got on. We are heading my into. Lanta. <laughs> oh my Lanta! You are, you're practically a grandpa. <laughs> we are heading into a little thing we like to call a uh, riddling, and I'm not entirely sure how it goes. It could use some explanation. Well, riddling. If a bit. Whoa! Oh, okay. Here we go. I got it. You got it. Riddling is a game we like to play that takes a two-part trivia-based question, and it requires a two-part but overlapping answer. So I'm going to give you a quick example. Last week, our riddle, our uh, idiom was, it ain't over till the fat lady sings, and we left you with this riddle link. It ain't over until this person sings in the year the World's Fair was in Vancouver, Canada. Did you get that one? It was like KD6 or something like that. Fat Lady 6. Okay. Fat Lady 6. So it's Fat Lady in 86. Oh, over. I just went with Kate. Like Kate, like Smith. Kate Smith. Good memory. Katie. It's a week ago. Kate, well, it's in my head now. Not Jacqueline Smith. Right. That's very different. She's an angel. <laughs> Fat Lady in 86 overlaps by a two-syllable 80 sound, and that's how you play Riddlink. So well, I've got a couple here. I've got a couple. Let me jump in uh, at first. Yeah, you go first. Whatever. Villagitimate children. <laughs> <laughs> I was a single child. <laughs> I wasn't. Was. See, but right there. I'm making... Uh, now I'm like single then children. You just made fun of... Uh, yeah, sing- people that are... Uh, what what do you together. call it? Not single children. Only Only child. <laughs> That's wor- that's a terrible title. I'm an only child. Oh, see, uh, we should just shut up. I feel like everything we there say after this. There should be a better name for that. Celebrated. Siblingless? Oh. <laughs> okay. Anyways, let me jump in with the riddling. <laughs> Why didn't my parents want more? Illegitimate children. Please uh, jump in with your uh, responses. I'm completely undressing <laughs> with John Cleese and Eric Idle. Oh, easy. Peasy, full Monty Python. It's the full Monty Python. I've noticed they say Python. Python? Monty Python. Hmm. Anyway, uh, here's one for you. Not everything is funny. It's just informative. Nope, just information. When something... So this one is not particularly witty. I just like how it rolled off the tongue. All right. All right. When something is in abundance, it is said to be the whole amount completely. Bountiful Monty? I'll take it. I, I had plenty full. Okay. Bountiful Monty. Bountiful That's Monty. actually better. Bountiful Monty. Well, mine's, mine's along that vein. That phrase is very difficult to communicate orally, which in Britain means remove all my clothes. <laughs> uh, uh, it's hard to say orally. Um... So it ends in full. So I'm not full. It's a mouthful. Mouth, it's a mouthful, Monty. Is it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, it came around. I was th- trying to think of a word like plentiful. I just like watching your, your, your brain spin. Through it's your a eyes. mouthful, Monty. Okay, I got one more, but I'm going to leave it for our legitimate Woo! children out there, our only child. I'm fired up. Our. But uh, tell them how they can get a hold of us. You can reach out to us on Instagram at the.village.idiom or email us at thevillageidiompodcast at gmail.com or whether it's Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter at three minutes gone. All right, this is it. This bespoke tailoring bigwig was also the lead singer for the Guess Who. Wow. That is... You got it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I got it. Well, that has been three minutes gone. Beauty. Beauty. Fun putting today's uh, episode together. So we uh, rabbit trailed there pretty harsh at the end. <laughs> we really we jumped right off the trail. We'll tell you what we think about this. <laughs> Feel free to share your opinion. <laughs> as we We're going to lock down the comments on this one. <laughs> Negative. Uh, I'm Skinny. I am Jurassic Haberdashery Mark. And these are the village idioms. Uh, darn it all. These right here. <laughs> That's three minutes gone.